I want you to turn with me in your Bibles, if you would please, to two different places, and you might keep something in uh, each of them so that we can go back and forth. We'll go back and forth a couple of times. I'm going to read, first of all, from Ephesians chapter 4. I'll start you at verse 17 in just a moment. Ephesians 4, verse 17, but I'd also love for you, if you would please, to get Matthew 24 and verse 12 ready. So I'll read it second after I read the portion in Ephesians 4, verse 17. Therefore, I say to you and testify in the Lord that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to their hardness of heart. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. But that is not the way you learn to Christ. Assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires, to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God and true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear and do not breathe the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Now I have two more verses to go there because I'm about to read verses one and two of chapter five. Anybody get that with me? No, no, honestly. That we get to, it says, put away all bitterness, wrath, and anger and clamor and slander along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. No, seriously. This is our calling. Verses 1 and 2 of chapter 5. Now, I do not know why in the world when they begin to put chapters and verses in our Bibles, they would split it from the verses before. So would you just like take it out of your mind's eye for a moment, move that chapter 5 because verse 32 moves straight in to verse 1 of 5. Therefore, because he's just described, this is some of the reality, this is what it looks like. Therefore, be imitators of God as dearly loved children and walk in love as Christ also loved us and gave himself for us a sacrificial and fragrant offering to God. Now, would you glance at Matthew chapter 24, and then we will leave something right there and go back to our Ephesians text. It will be our primary text for this evening. Matthew chapter 24, God bless the reading of your word. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. My hope is to serve my family but I'm part of a family that transcends flesh and blood. And to Christ it comes first. And because my deepest devotion is to Christ, then my deepest service is to his body. And I'm serious about it. I'm a Jesus follower, as many of you are. And my people are my brothers and sisters in Christ. Paul says it this way in Galatians chapter 6, I am part of the household of God. On every occasion possible, he says, do good, especially to the family of God. And this family of God is important to me, and it's made up of every ethnicity and will ultimately be made up of every tongue, tribe, and nation under heaven. 
There is a family code in most of our families, a way of doing things. But the family code of the household of God transcends the family code of our natural relatives, spouses, children, cousins, grandparents, and grandchildren. And this actual way of life is not meant to be theoretical or simply theological. It was meant to be actual. What he's telling us here, we'll, we'll read it and we'll amen it. And I mean, that sounds so good. But these were words, not just for learning, but for living. That this was supposed to be a reality. That this is what we look like living out the calling of Christ because of the family that we're part of, because the blood of Christ surpasses every natural bloodline. So I wanted to come together with you this evening to think through what is the way of he who says that he is the way, the truth, and the life. What, what is his way? What is his way? What is his manner? Because let me tell you something. If, if our idea of discipleship is to grow in knowledge, but we do not look one whit more like Jesus than we did when we started 10 years ago, something has gone terribly awry in our discipleship because all of that studying was so that we could get to know the one who calls us into the imitation of his lifestyle. The psalmist said in Psalm 25, teach me your ways, O Lord. Lead me in your paths and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I call upon day and night. I want us to stare into the text uh, in Ephesians, and if you mark in your Bibles, you might put a bracket around verses 25 to 32, 25 to 32, and I'm going to tell you why, because they serve as a parenthetical portion that is going to tell us a little bit about what life looks like in what is being described just before it and just after it. Because listen, listen to the similarities here. Because you have, starting at 25 through 32, you have things like, we're going to speak the truth to our neighbor. Um, we're going to be angry um, at times, but we're not going to sin. We're not going to let the sun go down our anger. We're not going to give opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Um, it goes into loving one another, being tender-hearted toward one another, and, and forgiving one another. So all of that is telling us, what does it look like? What does, what does it look like when, the, when the, the bare feet of a human hit the hot pavement of earth trying to live out the fellowship of Christ? But it, it's this bracket that is within something he has introduced just before it and then follows up with it. Listen carefully. Look at verse 22. He says that you were taught to take off your former way of life, your old self, your old self that is corrupted by deceitful desires, to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self, the one created according to God's likeness and righteousness and purity of the truth. So he's saying you're, you're, we're, we're putting off the old self and, and we're putting on the new self. And so it tells us how. This is a little bit about what it looks like. And then it goes straight into, therefore, be imitators of God as dearly loved children, and walk in love as Christ also loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. So in between, it's saying, it's saying the same thing. you got to put off the old, be renewed in the spirit of our minds, put on the new, because it is the only way we are ever, ever going to walk in any semblance of imitation of Christ Jesus.